the best portable bandsaw wall mount. If you don't believe me, watch the video and you'll be convinced. And as an added bonus, all of the STL files are included so you can print one of your very own. The dreaded disclaimer. For your viewing pleasure, I added a time index. We have a saw in here. Obviously there's a saw in here. And I want to tell a little bit of a story and you're like, oh my god, really? It's really a story? This is an awesome saw. It works great. But the problem is, it's inside of the case, inside of a cabinet. So what I want to do is I want to make this so I can use it every day or every once in a while when I need a saw. So I was going through hacksaw blades and I'm like, oh, I got to go to the store and get more hacksaw blades because I'm out of hacksaw blades. And then I'm like, there's got to be a better way. Well, obviously I have this thing. What if I mounted this on the wall? But I want to be able to use this again relatively easy. So I want something that I could quickly take apart and quickly mount. So it takes under five minutes or under three minutes and almost no tooling to go from being a wall mounted saw to being a saw I can use in the portable in the field. Ideally, that would be my dream to do this. So that's the idea that I'm coming up with this. So I can have this to use every day and still be able to use it as a portable saw when I need to. One of the other issues that I have, guys will turn around, they'll make metal clips to clip these on with metal. The problem is with that is if I'm gonna be holding this in my hands and using this, I want this handle to be undamaged. So I'm gonna 3D print the exact same contour that's on here so that I won't have any damage to the handle or any damage to these pieces at all. This is the top handle that goes on to our saw. So when we have this guy up here, this guy will mount onto there and sit just like that perfectly. Now, because this is 3D printed plastic and I have it on the weakest setting on purpose, so when this is on the wall, mounted on the wall, and the table's on here and everything, and you bump it, I want these pieces to break. But what I don't want is this fall, or this fall, this saw to fall off the wall. I absolutely don't want the saw to fall off the wall. So what I'm doing is through this piece here, there's going to be a bolt going all the way through. That bolt, no matter what happens, will support the saw. It, can, it will not allow the saw to fall off of the wall under any circumstances. These pieces here will break away relatively easily. So what we have here for this, is this is the bottom of the saw, and this piece here will go around and clip onto here, sorry, clip onto here, and when this is not being used, this will sit in this position, that's the stop, and then when you want to turn the saw on, that will turn the saw on. And then obviously that gets secured. So you can't lose the on off button. On off, secured. This is our portable mount. You could just bolt this onto the wall like this, onto the wall, not a problem. It would work just fine. But I'm gonna bolt it onto a piece because you might wanna take this and move it to a different location. The one that I have, my other piece is put onto angle iron and I have it mounted on a scaffolding. And that is the most convenient location in my garage for me. So this one I'm making for my buddy Rob. So I wanna be able to take this and then drill some holes in here and mount it to wherever he wants so he doesn't have to worry about spacing. So we're gonna set this up and we're gonna use transfer punches. So when I have my, my piece set perfect, I will use my transfer punch to transfer holes into here and then I will pull this off and drill and tap into here and we're all good. We have this placed on a corner edge here because I obviously can't transfer holes while this is on the piece, but I can mark this one to where it goes in place. So this one's gonna be at the top and then this one here is gonna be lined up along the back and then I'm gonna put a magic marker here so I can put this on top when I remove the saw. So if we take a look here, saw on, Saw off, saw on, saw off. Okay, so now we're gonna use a transfer punch. So if you take a look, there's a little bump on the end of these guys. You find the right diameter, which in this case, uh, we're doing a quarter inch. So we're doing quarter 20 holes. And then I'm just gonna set this guy in here like this, in the middle of my hole. This is gonna be a little loud. And then you just give it a little tap. And then it transfers that mark onto there. But I'm gonna do that for all the holes and then I'm gonna pick which ones I want to use.
Basically, you shouldn't do this, but a lot of people do. I'm going to be tapping this because this is aluminum and it's plate and it's not a blind hole. So basically, I'm just doing quarter 20. I'm going to put this guy in here. I'm going to be as perpendicular as I possibly can and just go for it. Go through. I don't recommend doing this. Pretty easy stuff. Where we assemble the saw and transform it from a hand saw into a band or basically a contouring band saw. So we have our two pieces mounted onto our block, as you've seen in our previous part of our video. So now I want to fake mount this onto the wall. I'm just going to put these clamps on for now to do a demo so it stays on the wall and I can show you how the saw actually hooks in. Now the one thing that I didn't do is my bad. I don't have a bolt here. Remember the safety bolt I talked about earlier? I don't have a safety bolt in here and that's the one piece that we should have, but I didn't bring one that's long enough. So when I actually mount this, it will have that safety bolt in there. That is very important to have. So I'm just gonna come over here, I'll cross over and put in. Borgo his office for a minute. Okay. So that guy into there. This is not going to be super secure, just one clamp will be good enough. And it won't, it's not hundred percent straight either, but that's good enough. Hopefully I clear this piece. So I'll take the on off off. And now I'm going to mount the saw. When I want to set it, I want to set it directly on. So when I mount the saw. This guy here is basically going to go straight on and then it's going to sit in there and it's going to mount just like that. Now I need to take this guard off right here and if you see that's the way it's going to sit. It's a little bit jiggly. It might tighten up a small amount more when I put some uh, felt tape up top here but that's basically what we're going to have. Just unscrew these two screws. Now these two guys here, the nuts float. I may have talked about this earlier, but if you take a look, the nuts float and you want to be very careful with those nuts because you need to have them in position to be able to put these exact same screws back in. So this piece you don't need anymore after, well, unless you decide to switch it back to a hand bandsaw. So let's get the table and we'll put the table on next. Okay, here's the table. To install the table, it is a little bit tricky. Everything's tricky, right? Nothing, nothing, nothing easy or worthwhile is ever easy. I pull the bandsaw blade off here like this, push it all the way to the top, and I'm going to pull the bottom out, and I'm gonna try and keep one end in. If I, yeah, I can't get, keep that guy in. So now I can pull my piece in, turn it, and lock the blade in at the same time, trying to keep this on at the same time. So there's a few things we're doing all at the same time here. Because this thing sits out like this, you can't put this on with the bands, uh, bandsaw blade in. So we're gonna put this guy in here, just like this, through this nice little hole here. Tilt it up, tilt it around. And I hope I'm not making this look too easy because it's not super easy to do, okay? So push that blade guide in, push the top blade guide in, Okay, that was too easy. It's, it's, it's rarely ever that easy, <laughs> as to say. Now I'm gonna take my Allen key that I used because the spacers here are a little bit different and I have to look down, I wish I was taller, but I have to make sure that my nuts are within the right spot. So this is a little bit tricky to make sure that the nut here is within the right spot. So I need to be able to look down through here, which I'm probably gonna to have to get a light to see because the nuts have to line up so that when I clamp them down, 
they bolt down. So this will take a second to line those nuts up. I told you that this was difficult, but through camera magic, they seem to line up magically. So I put my bolt in, into the thread. Perfect. Put the next bolt in. Perfection again. Give that a bit of a tighten. Now I won't be taking this off ever again. One thing, if you decide to do this again, my buddy pointed out to me, he's like, Ray, perfect, perfect. Why do you got a pokey here again? So I should have put a round one on back here as well, just in case you're coming from this side, because this side's tight to the guard, but this side isn't. So I could have done a little better that way. I really could have, and put a third one in, but I have two of them, it's good enough for what we have now. Now let's try and do the guards. These guards were made and designed for my daughter because my daughter has long hair and I was worried that if she's ever in the shop or whatever, that her long hair would get caught in here. Oh, hey, foolish me. I didn't tighten the bandsaw up. <laughs> that would have been bad, right? Eh, not everything's perfect. And I know why it's jiggly because I only got one clamp holding it on. So this guy here is a nice uh, acrylic guard. Uh, the bolts in here, the files for everything's on there and it just slips over top. You don't want to stretch any of these very much. So you just gingerly set them on. It just sits there. And you can see everything still. And then the bottom one. So basically I cut this out on the bandsaw. I sanded it down. I drilled all the holes, in the, with, probably with a hand drill. And then this guy here, I just heated it up with a heat gun. And then we slam this guy on here on the bottom. Just jiggle it a little bit and it fits on there nice and snug. It's not coming off, it's not going anywhere. And okay, now that I've magically plugged this guy in, I'm going to take my on off switch, which should be magically attached there, and it will be when I give it to my buddy Rob. I'm gonna we take our plug and we put it inside here for holding and here for starting. And we can turn the light on and off right here, and we can adjust our speed depending on what type of material we're using. Excellent. So just to show how easy it is to remove this, all you have to do to do no damage to any of the stuff here, because it is weak, but I mean, once you have it on there, I mean, you can do whatever you want to it. Pull this out about 30 degrees, about there, and then lift straight up. Put it on, 30 degrees, boom. What you need is one of our stops, uh, the bottom clip and the top clip. These are printed on the weakest setting for 3D printing, 15% infill. It's done for a reason. When this was up in my garage, when the other unit was up in my garage, I had to move the scaffolding that it was bolted to so my brother could have access to the garage door. I hit the saw on some other piece of equipment in the garage and it snapped it off. And my brother was like, oh, I didn't mean to do that. I'm like, I really like that that broke. As crazy as it sounds, it did not damage the saw in any way, shape or form. And this will work on any DeWalt D28770. If you have a D28770 and it says it on the side here as well, it actually says D28770 or N, I'm not sure what it says, but yeah, any saw that says that, this will fit perfectly. It's straight off the 3D printer. It's no muss, no fuss. And I'm also gonna include a file, which I don't suggest you use, where you 3D print a plastic uh, bed here. It's pretty cheesy. I wouldn't suggest anybody use it. I like the little aluminum plate. This plate here I've had on my unit for a very long time and it's got all sorts of scratches on it and everything else, but it works great. This is the process that I use to make the table. Follow the print for all of the dimensions. I basically am using a 1 16th end mill to put a clearance in for the saw blade, then following it up with a 45 degree to add extra clearance on the bottom side and putting in my drills and counterboard holes. I made up a little template here. This guy here will hug the corners. Then I draw the radius on here. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. That's on there pretty good. Take my magic marker. Draw it across. There's my radius. What I will then do is bandsaw that and file it, and then put this corner piece on. 
and away we go. Funny thing is I have two of these plates, one for this saw and one for the other saw. So I'm going to do the other saw first, take this one off, put that one on, and then put this and do this one. Yeah, something else that I didn't mention is how are we going to hold these guys on? I'm not gonna, I mean, I could glue them on, but I want to build, bolt them on and off. So what I did here, I want to have this guy here as well. This here is a hole for number seven. So I'm going to use this actually as my drill guide. So I'm going to drill in number seven here and then tap at quarter 20 and then put my piece on from underneath and then use a half inch quarter 20 bolt to uh, hold this guy on. Okay, so I got this guy here. Let's throw a corner on there. And this guy will come up from the bottom and sit just like this. I need to clean this up a little bit with a file. And same with on this side here. And that doesn't look so bad. That's not bad at all. And then that'll be a nice protective edge instead of this sharp thing right here. Take my template here. Put it over top. Make sure it's pushed down all the way. And I'm going to take a hand drill. I could use my other drill there and then I'm going to drill through here and I'm going to tap this hole and do the same thing on this side. Okay so this is what the new one looks like. So now let's put this one on here, cut this one out, and do the same thing and then put it back. My design intent. Okay I'd like to talk about some of the reasoning behind what I did and why I did it so you can understand my design concept. Um, my first piece was the handle piece where the handle hangs up. That's this guy right here. What I did is I wanted to make an exact curvature of the inside of the handle because a lot of the other ones out there, they take tubing and they slide the handle into the tubing. And what happens is the handle gets damaged after a while. I wanted to make sure this was an exact cradle of the actual handle so there's no damage to the handle because there's nothing worse than having a tool and you're using a bare hands and the handles chewing up your hand because there's all sorts of gouges missing from it. And I also wanted to have multiple ways of mounting this. So if you take a look, in my example, I only use this screw here, this screw here, and this screw here. Now, these two screws were just randomly picked. I put bolts through them, good enough to hold on. This screw here that goes all the way through that was chosen because what I wanted to do is make sure that if there's any break or uh, misintegrity of the form right here. So basically, if this thing broke off, there's a steel bolt going through there and that will prevent the saw from falling down. So I wanted to have 100% because this is 3D printed and it's hollow or honeycombed on the inside. And I only print um, this, type, this type of stuff with very cheapest settings possible. Another thing is, just in case this handle had some jiggle in here, I wanted to put plastic set screws in here. So these are quarter 20s right here. And this was originally intended to be mounted on a wall. And then I said, no, no, I want to mount this on my scaffolding or my workbench that I used to make my videos on. So that's where that concept came through. So this is for the portable DeWalt saw, the D2877 OK. And that's my wall mount. So now the bottom here, has a couple of cool things into it as well. This actually cradles the handle inside here. And again, I believe I use this one and this one. I didn't use four because I'm bolting it onto a piece of aluminum angle. Uh, I wanted to have an on off right here. So what I did is I turned around and I keyed it in. See how that's keyed in so it can't turn. So it gets pushed in so I can move this guy. Oop, move this guy in and out. And that actually turns the trigger on and off on the saw. You can pull it all the way out if you want. So let's say you have this set up and you don't want your kids touching it. You pull this thing out and it's good to go and no one can actually hurt themselves by accidentally turning it on if they plug it in or whatever. So that's a bit of a safety there I wanted to build into this. Again, this is 3D printed plastic again. This here is a piece of angle channel with two holes drilled in it for mounting on the scaffolding. Now, if you take a look at here, there are two tabletops 
This one here is 3D printed. It has a concept of a pinching concept and a bolt down concept. So what I wanted to do was actually tap these guys here and here, and it would actually grab onto the guide, not even the guide, yeah, the guide that the table set on. And this table would slide on with the blade intact, and you could slide it out with the countersinks here. And then this skirt around would give the table rigidity. But it is plastic. But if you just want to 3D print something to get your saw up and running real quick, or pay somebody else to 3D print it, throw the mount on, this is, I don't know, this is as easy as it gets. This guy here is an aluminum plate. And I'll show you because I have some videos of me machining it. And I machined it so that it bolts on nicely. And the nice thing is that it's aluminum. But the saw blade has to come off to mount this. Which it only takes a minute to do. And that's basically my concept and design intent. Okay, this is the original base unit. Uh, basically looks the exact same. You put your uh, key lock in here. Turns the, turns the unit on. And then you pull it out and you hide the key. Well, that wouldn't work for me because I'd lose the key. So we decided to go with this guy here. And we could store it, but it would be pushed back on an angle this way. Not a problem. It worked great. But the problem is you had to push it in and it was parallel to the other piece. So then we came up with this one here where I put it in from this top angle and it locks inside let's go back to our two pins so this is the original stop pull it out lose it forever have to reprint another one and the depth from here to here wasn't deep enough to get your fingers in so we want to change that up a little bit so this is our second concept that we came up with it was a more gentler piece to turn the saw blade on to trigger the trigger uh, and it had a deeper well here and it had a little loop to be able to put a string on or a wire which turns out to be really really good so let's take a look at this guy so in this concept here you obviously don't have two this is just the different showing the different storage so when i have it and i want to trigger the unit to turn on this guy slides in here bumps the trigger click click turns the trigger on when i'm done and it'll stay on when i'm done I can either drop it and let it go and it'll hang from the string or I can turn around and put it in here and it slides into there. Not a problem. It sits nice and safe. You'll never lose it. So a nice storage space and uh, this idea worked really well. 3D printing. It doesn't always go the way you want it to. These are the fingers that secure the guards to the saw. There's six left and six right. Okay, there's a bit of a support issue here. <laughs> I mean, it made one hell of a mess. But it printed. I was I'm quite impressed, actually. Uh, I'll explain the support issue later. This is my old printer, and it doesn't have a removable bed, so you have to pry the plastic off of the printed surface. It can be a bit of a challenge sometimes. So I incorporated it on the bottom, these little flats, to be able to put my tool in to pry it off. This is what it looks like when you have proper supports put in place. They're very, very thin. And basically what it does is it allows you to print into outer space. This was the problem that I had at the beginning, where you had all these little strings flying all over the place. That was because there was nothing supporting the material and you can't print into outer space. Okay, so why is this the best saw mount? Two reasons. The amount of effort it takes to have a finished part is minimal. If you wanted everything 3D printed, which I don't suggest you 3D print the table, I suggest that you get a piece of aluminum. That is the best way to go. But everything else can be 3D printed. Oh, I don't have a 3D printer? Well, you can hire somebody from Facebook Marketplace or any of the other places that will do 3D printing. You can go to the library and print it for free. And the second reason is because its weakness is its strength. If you're walking by it and you walk into it too hard or something slams up against it, you're not going to break the saw. You will snap off the plastic, which is exactly what you want because these guys are still quite expensive. There will be a link to the STL files. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments. I'll answer them the best that I can. Uh, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, have a great night. Uh, please like and subscribe.